Watch the Mega Millions Drawing Live tonight here on TV23. Covering the high plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Yes, it is. High Plains Today. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 2016. Welcome to High Plains Today right here on TV23. On today's show, I'll be joined by Mr. Brett McKinley and Brian Mitchell. They're with the Mitchell Theater Group and the historic Doric Theater in Elkhart. We're going to talk about the transformation that's happening over there. In the meantime, let's take a look at happenings. A standoff in Gray County that prompted two school districts to cancel classes yesterday is over. The Gray County Sheriff's Department had the man barricaded in a home and was working with the KBI Special Response Team. Law enforcement gassed the home where the man suspected of being armed was hiding, and that forced him out. He was arrested and booked into the Meade County Jail. Now, USD 371 Montezuma and USD 476 Copeland decided to cancel school for that day. South Gray High School Principal Tim Skinner said the residence was near the high school and the elementary school in Montezuma. And Texas Rangers continue to investigate a Monday morning police shooting in Periton. A 911 caller told police that a man wearing camel clothing, body armor, and a firearm near Pakasak was heading towards the middle school. Officers found the man and confronted him. Police report that he did not initially appear to have a weapon. The man later pulled a handgun out from his clothes. Police then shot the man. Now, the Perryton Police Department has confirmed that the weapon the suspect pointed at officers was a pellet gun that looked like a handgun. The orange tip was not on the pellet gun. The man was taken to a hospital in Amarillo. And Friday concluded a three-day jury trial at the Gray County Courthouse. Former Cimarron resident, resident Jeremy Smith was on trial for 10 felony counts including two counts of rape, three counts of aggravated criminal sodomy, three counts of aggravated indecent liberties with a child, and two counts of criminal threats. A jury found Smith guilty on all ten counts. He is currently in custody and in the Meade County Jail and is awaiting sentences for the charges. And the Kansas legislature improved an increase in vehicle registration fees to provide extra funds for the state Highway Patrol to hire additional troopers. The votes on the bill were 92 to 27 in the House and 36 to 4 in the Senate. The bill also includes another fee increase to provide additional funds for the center in Hutchinson that trains law enforcement officers. Vehicle registration fees would increase a total of $3.25. A $2 increase would raise $5.4 million a year for the patrol so it could hire an additional 75 troopers. Now, 35 of the state's 105 counties have no assigned trooper. An additional $1.25 will, would uh, increase, would raise $3.4 million annually for the training center. And six years before it has to be done, state and federal officials are already talking about redistricting of congressional and legislative districts in Kansas. Now, the new maps for political districts aren't due in Kansas until 2022. But the officials from the U.S. Census Bureau met with the state legislature's research department last week to discuss the process and get familiar with data and computer software that will be used. The next census will be in 2020, and states have two years after that to draw new political maps. Now, this process is often controversial. In 2012, Kansas lawmakers were unable to draw a redistricting plan of their own, leaving the job to a three-judge federal court panel. I'm surprised. Anyway, that's a look at some of the stuff that's happening out there. Be back with a sunshiny, maybe a little bit of rain in the forecast coming up next. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. You want to feel connected at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, 
when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. We investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Local weather forecast for the High Plains. Lots of sunshine out there today as we look off on the TV23 tower cam. There were a lot of clouds that kind of blew through early this morning. Other than that, though, it's not bad. Let's take a look at the readings here at the station right now. 62 degrees, relative humidity. It's not like it was yesterday, 52%. Winds are a little higher, though. Still pretty tame, north at 12. Barometric pressure on the rise. As we look at the current temperatures around the viewing area, look at that. Everybody in the 60s. That's not too bad. Can't complain about that for the 3rd of May. Everybody's current dew points in the 30s, low 40s, so everybody's pretty much same, same as we are at the humidity level here. Looking at our wind speeds around the area, nobody really liberal at 17, Perryton at 15. Other than that, Lamar at 16, everybody else not too bad. The winds aren't going to be bad today, maybe a little bit this afternoon. As we take a look at our highs and lows as recorded at the Garden City Regional Airport, see we got 61 yesterday. That's a far cry from 99 back in 1965. Our overnight low yesterday, 32. 28, the record back in 1967. No new precipitation in the bucket, but we are closing in on 5 inches so far for the year. As we take a look at our forecast for today, it's going to be mostly sunny, 68 degrees for the high. Winds are going to pick up just a little bit north-northwest at 17, so it's going to stay kind of cool. Tonight, 42 for our low. Winds are still going to be out of the north at 14, shifting just around just a little bit out of the northwest after midnight, and then tomorrow, the warm-up's going to start. We're going to be up in the 70s. 77 for the high, lots of sunshine. Winds are going to be out of the west-northwest at 10, switching around late in the afternoon to be in pretty much northerly. Tomorrow night, not bad, 46 degrees for our low, going to be clear. Winds are going to come around just a little bit out of the north-northeast at 7, and then well after midnight, early morning into the south-southeast. Now, as we look at the seven-day, you can see we're going to still warm up a bunch. We're going to get up to 85 by Friday. We do have a chance of some precipitation coming in on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, but it's, you know, it's not really going to cool off that bad. Let's take a look at our storm spotter training. We have one left. It's coming up on Thursday at 7 p.m. at the courthouse in St. John. That's a look at the weather. Be back with the markets and Brent and Brian after this. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kdgltv.com.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Lead paint poisoning affects one million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent, one in 260,000. The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR, one in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back. I'm now joined on set by two gentlemen from Elkhart, Mr. Brian Mitchell, Mr. Brent McKinley. They are both with the Mitchell Theater Group and the Doric Theater in Elkhart. Gentlemen, thanks for coming over today. How thanks you doing? For it's having us here. all the way over here from the great southwest corner. Well, we appreciate you having us. Yeah. yeah. All right. The Doric Theater, downtown Elkhart. Yes, You're sir. Built in 1918, right? Built in 1918. We uh, possibly by some... Uh, immigrants from the Midwest. Uh, the Doric Theater name is actually, Doric is a name of a Greek column. And everybody's like, well, what the heck does Doric have to do? There's no Greek columns in Greek. there. <laughs> but what we've found out is it's probably a group of settlers that came from upper Indiana right in there and had a Doric Theater back then and just renamed this when they relocated. So. All right. Good. Thank you, because I was going to say, so is Doric the guy who built it? <laughs> no. Okay. So it's a column. 
Yes. All right. And it was, and it had a lot of vaudeville and that kind of stuff in it back in the day. Yes. It was originally a vaudeville theater and with uh, vaudeville troops would come through the, across the countryside. And in about um, 30s, late 40s, it was also showed silent films and they had the organ and the orchestra pit and stuff. And so it actually was dual purpose. And then it closed, what, in 1981? 81. The last time? Yeah, 81. I was actually a junior in high school. and uh, He's 19... dating himself there. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so just about you guys' age. So, uh, And so that was the last time it actually showed a m movie. And then uh, at some point, this uh, family built apartments in there. And uh, so I didn't think it was ever going to be a movie theater again. So, uh, But uh, it is. It's on its way to becoming one. That's pretty close to becoming one. Yes, it is. Yeah. You guys have then done a lot of work. Ten years ago, the Morton County Community Theater Group, they actually purchased the building mm -hmm. with the hopes of turning it into a live theater. Um, fundraising tried to happen, but we just never really could raise enough funds to get it done. So it basically just became a storage space, you know, for the theater group. to. Because that's where you come in, in, in the Morton County Community much, Theater yeah. part, isn't it? Yeah, Brian actually called me one night and had this crazy idea that he wanted to purchase the building from us and turn it into a movie theater. And he said, you better hurry up and convince your people into doing this before I change my mind. So I hung up the phone with him and got on the phone with the rest of the theater group. And, and you just kind of told him, we're doing this. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was on a Monday night, and I believe on Friday. On Friday, we closed the deal on yeah. Friday, so it was five days. So, But it was kind of the wild idea came about was we were in the process of adding a, another screen onto our Garden City Theater, Sequoia 8, and to make it Sequoia 9. Well... In the theater building business, you've got a lot of specialty crews from the drapes to the sound to the to just a lot of specialty crews that go across country. And I thought, well, my, my thought was, you know, if we bring the crews into Garden City, maybe we can get them down to Elkhart. And, you know, and I, we order seats for both, both screens at the same time. Order. So that was the process, uh, or that was the initial idea. So we got it all going. But the problem is the Doric. Uh, took quite a bit more work <laughs> than we thought. You get an it was built in 1918, 19, yeah, yeah. you goof. 98 year old building. You there forget some, that? There were some challenges, <laughs> politically correct. See, I didn't tell him any of these challenges <laughs> yeah, before he yeah, purchased yeah. it. So. I see. So okay. the Garden City project actually got done and it was opened up. It's been open about six weeks and uh, hopefully the Doric. We're, we're, I think we're looking at June. So now this is just going to be a single screen theater. Single screen so theater. So will this be called the Doric One then? <laughs> just Doric Cinema. That's, okay. I guess, the way all to right, do it. Right. So. Mitchell Theater's Doric Cinema. But, well, now, but you guys are going to do double purpose in this yes, building. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, it's actually also set up. They're actually building the stage today as we're speaking, right? Yes, yes. Um, there's going to be a stage actually in front of the screen, the curtains that will cover the screen, and we'll still be able to do live productions in there also. So the community theater will be able to do things there. The community theater or will. Or anybody else who anybody wants Anybody can come in and do it. Um, we can get traveling colleges, uh, productions that want to come in and do it. We've talked about getting uh, on the comedy circuit, maybe having some mm -hmm. comedians come in. It's even set up to do bands, yeah. I believe. Yeah, or we, we can even worse. bring bands in and, and have concerts and stuff. Look at you too, guys. So. You guys are going to go head-to-head -head with United yeah, Wireless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So. so what's the seating capacity of the Dork now? Uh, if you've been to our theaters in Garden City, Guyman, or uh, Liberal, Liberal yeah. that if you'll notice, it's wide row spacing. It's 55 inch row spacing. So because we've always believed in comfort first, so I wish the airline industry yeah. would take that take <laughs> so, that cue from you. So uh, with that wide row spacing, we've still got about 120 seats and then spaces for three wheelchairs. So it's it's you know it's going to be a fairly decent sized theater. Well, uh, it is. Part of the things that we've got into that we never imagined as we started this project was again doing the live theater and stuff. Well we ended up utilizing the old balcony and the old projection room and we've actually got a liquor license and we're putting in it's called Oscar's Lounge. Oscar named after the Academy Award statue. So it's sort of then we got to think well if we're going to have wine and beer and stuff there then we can also want need to have some upgraded finger foods in the traditional fair. So we're kind of robbing a little bit of Alamo Draft House type <laughs> feel to it. So, uh, so then, so it's going to be, you know, uh, it's kind of a boutique. It's kind of the boutique theater is kind of the the terminology they're using right now. The yeah, they have some so, of those in some of the bigger cities uh -huh. and stuff. Yeah, those are kind of slick. But yeah, because you can eat and everything while you're doing that. Yes, you know, yes. Not, not just your popcorn and candy and yeah. stuff. And it's not going to be steaks and that kind of stuff. But it's going to be finger foods and that kind of stuff. And and again, this whole thing just keeps evolving. I'm glad it's going to finally come to an end because i got to quit having these ideas. But since we, this is a, a weekender theater, basically in the theater business, most of our theaters are first-run movie screens. So sure. that means 
this weekend, Captain America is going to be at all of our theaters. And we have to run it all week long. We, you know, we got contracts with Disney. We got contracts with Warner Brothers, Sony. So you have to kind of, uh, Disney and the, the Mouse House, they kind of dictate some things to you. Well, they this, have some pull. This Does they do. Pull? Yes, they do. So <laughs> even though we send them large checks every week for film rental. But, uh, but with this, this is going to be a su second run theater, sub run. So that means like Captain America will open this week in most of our theaters. But if we get the door going it, in the 1st of June, we may open up with Captain America there. Okay, so it's going to be about a month behind. Uh, but the, only, the good thing about that is that because it's not a first-run theater, that allows us flexibility with all of the films we book. So uh, those of us that are movie files are definitely, you know, one of the things that makes me mad is like just during the Oscar award season, I wanted to bring in... Uh, Spotlight, which won Best Academy. I wanted mm -hmm. to bring in Brooklyn, but when you go to Disney and go, okay, I want to bring in these movies to Garden City or Liberal or Gaiman, and they go, no, a seventh week of Star Wars is going to do better business than a week of Spotlight. We're not going to let you do it. And they can kind of control that because you have, even though it's your theater, they want the highest grossing movies in there. It's their movie. It's their movie. <laughs> it doesn't exactly. say, it says Mitchell Theaters, not Walt Disney <laughs> Theaters, but... They kind of feel that way. So, but what's going to happen with the Doric is we're going, we're not going to have those restrictions. So we have already, we're going to have art house and independent movies during the week. And so, like right now, for instance, one of the big movies is "Hello, My Name Is Doris," starring Sally Field. Yes. There's "I Saw the Light," the, the Hank Williams story. Uh, uh, if depending on your politics, uh, Michael Moore's "Which Where Do We Invade Next?" And so these are all movies that. I'm not allowed to bring into our current theaters, but I, we can do it at Doric. Sure. So not only is this going to be something for our local people there in Morton County and stuff, but there's the people when we get the you know, and it's gonna and with the lounge and stuff, you're gonna be able to come to Elkhart instead of going to Denver or Wichita or Santa Fe, you're gonna be able to watch Hello My Name is Doors and have a glass of wine. There you go. With your movie. So it's yeah. it, it's amazing how many people we visit with that the art house and independent they love those movies but and the other thing is though i mean this is going to be set up basically like you're going to have digital projection yes mm -hmm. and you've got the the sound system and lighting and the, the curtains and all that i mean everything yeah. that way is the same yes yes i mean you're not going to walk in looking for the doric greek count no no it's no, not going to be there no. And the only and I did say, and we were showing a bunch of the pictures of the remodel and stuff. And I mean, you've put in the stadium seating, yep. just like all the other theaters that you guys have. And so it's going to be nice for the community theater or whoever else. Well, another thing about what also Brian has done for the community theater behind the screen, there's actually a theater's green room. Um, it's not green. Though. Had, it's not green, but that's what we're going to call I, yeah, it. Yeah, I don't understand. Basically, that. it's the theater group's private lounge, is what I'm calling it. Okay, and all right. It's actually so nice. I want to move into it. It's got really comfortable couches. Well, it used to be apartments. makeup tables. It was apartments. Well, no, those, those a, were gone. We got a picture of the green room. Up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. There's yeah, a picture that's of the nice. green room right there. That's nice. But, and right. he's decorated it with uh, theater posters. You know, Broadway yes. posters. Whereas Oscar's Lounge, it's going to be decorated with movie posters. Okay. So we have our theater posters in the back for the theater group. But. So when do you think it's going to open quick? we got about well, 15 seconds. We've got our ceramic tile crew was the one we've had, we've had to wait on. So we're, they're supposed to be here next week. We have to do the bathrooms. We're going to do Art Deco tile across the front and the concession stands. So we're, if everything clicks, we're hoping the first week or two in June. So. All right. We'll be looking forward to that. Brian, Brian thanks for coming Thank over today. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you. This is, that's a slick, a slick deal. Go. <laughs> When it gets open, go to the Dork Theater in Elkhart and yes. stick around. I'll be back with more right after this. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV 23. We talk about news, we talk about sports, we talk about weather, we're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, Tune in, High Plains today. We'll see you then. Weekdays here on TV 23. You want to feel connected at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, on every screen in your life. 
your local TV and radio broadcasters. We investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you. Wherever here may be, text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. And uh, we're back. Hey, the Lady Buffs swept past the Liberal Lady Redskins in Western Athletic Conference doubleheader by scores of 11 to 3 and 23 to nothing. Yesterday in the 11 and 3 opener, Lady Buffs had to play all seven innings, but the other one only went. Three as a 13-run first inning. Now the Garden City Lady Buffs will get ready. They host Dodge City today. And Garden City Buffaloes face Liberal Monday in a doubleheader on a picture-perfect senior night at Clint Leitner Stadium. The weather was one of the few things that went the Buffs' way. However, as the Redskins won both games, 14-4 and 6-3. And the Royals got smoked last night, two to nothing, by the Nationals. And we got some special guests in the studio today. This is the South Middle School and Liberal. This is their broadcasting class. They're here checking us out today, and we're going to have some fun with them after the show. Let's take a last look at our weather. We're going to get out of here at 62 degrees, relative humidity 47%. Winds are out of the north, northwest 13. Barometric pressure is on the rise. And as we look at our seven day, look at that. We're going to get into the 80s by Friday, but we do have a chance of precipitation on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Other than that, though, it's going to be pretty warm, so not too bad. Go out and make it a great Tuesday, everybody. See you back here tomorrow. Keep up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL TV. Someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 110 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 600% increase in the last 20 years. Learn the signs at